As a kid, I always loved the show on Nickelodeon called Spongebob Squarepants. Though I did always think some episodes were very weird, such as the one where Spongebob and Patrick raised a clam. Was it Rockabye Bivalve? Anyway, I loved the series so much that I even bought the video games to go with the show. I bought stuff like Battle for Bikini Bottom and the Spongebob Squarepants movie game. But I recently discovered a new game while surfing on YouTube for Spongebob videos. I came across a Let's Play of a game called Spongebob Squarepants Legend of the Lost Spatula for the Nintendo Game Boy Color. I still had my old Game Boy Advance, so I wanted to try this game really bad. I didn't look on eBay, as I am a huge fan of creepypastas and hear supposed bad experiences with people who buy games on eBay. Rather, I decided to go ask my friend, Kyle, as he had owned lots of video games. He said that he didn't own it, but likely his older brother, who runs a shop with lots of used video games, had it and could send it. I said sure, and Kyle said I would have the game in no more than ten days. The game came nine days after I asked for it, and Kyle drove it over to me. It looked like it was in really good condition, save for some scratches and a letter on Spongebob, F, written in permanent marker. I noticed that the game came with a small piece of paper with letters and numbers on it. I thought it was a password, but I wanted to play the game, so I did. I started it up, and everything looked fine. Great even. I came to the title screen, and I didn't want to start a new game but try out the old file that the previous owner had. Of course, it was a password function, and I was in a rut. I then thought about the paper. I was right. It was a password. I inserted them into the password screen. Boy, that was a huge mistake I would regret. The game booted up, and I was in some light blue area on top of a bubble cloud. I watched the Let's Play again to find that this was the Goo Lagoon level of the game. Everything looked perfectly normal and I was ready to play this new game. I noticed that there were no other platforms or bubble clouds around, so I had no choice but to jump off the platform. I landed in Go the lagoon, just like the Let's Play showed, and I drowned after my head was in the water. I heard a faint cry come from my Game Boy and I could have sworn I heard laughter mixed with it. It was 8-bit, of course, but felt strangely realistic. A death screen came up saying, Strike 1, and I was taken to a new area. It was under the ocean, and had brown spikes everywhere, looking like a cave. I saw that a treasure chest was to my left, so I went to it and it said, Spikes are the only way out. The chest was right. The cave was full of spikes. I jumped on one, and died, now with the laugh louder, almost as if it was echoing in the cave. It was deep, almost demonic laughter. The screen cut to black, and I was presented with Strike 2. Was this baseball or a video game, I thought. I was now in Spongebob's neighborhood, only the water was a dark gray similar to smoke. I went to Squidward's house to find that he wasn't there, but Patrick was at his house. He had on a barrel, just like the normal games showed, except he wasn't sad about his missing clothes. No. He was smiling. A text box in a red bold font came up with Patrick talking. He asked, Hey Spongebob, wanna go to the carnival? It seemed innocent. A yes and no option came up, and I chose yes. Yet another regretful mistake. I was now at the carnival level, on top of a hook, standing next to Patrick. His grin was now wider, and he had red eyes. It was much like the scene from the episode Hooky, only it was so much worse. The hook shot up, and a loud eight-foot scream erupted from the speakers. Patrick jumped off, and Spongebob stayed. 
and was torn to shreds as he hit the top of the screen, and blood flew everywhere. The screen cut to black one last time, saying, You're out. After cutting to black again, the screen came back. I was at Goo Lagoon again, only Spongebob was gray, and the sand was an eerie black. I went up to Larry the Lobster, who had said just one ellipsy and a white font. I kept going until I hit the dock. I realized I either jumped off or stayed in this level. Patrick in the barrel and with that horrid grin came up. He said again in a red font, What? You don't want to be with me? I'm... I'm... your best friend. After this, a loud snap was heard, and Patrick now held a knife. Come to hell with me, he said. Patrick then ran towards Spongebob incredibly fast, and Spongebob ran into the lagoon. The screen popped up with Spongebob in the cave area, only it was red now and looked like hell. Spongebob was dead, and after looking at a dead Spongebob for ten seconds, Patrick appeared, along with that loud laughter. The game shut itself off, and I was done. I wanted to get rid of it. I went to Kyle's, and I threw the game at him before stepping on it and crushing it. I yelled at him and left, still horrified by my experience. Remember, sometimes you can't even trust your own best friend. And that was Forever Lost Spatula, written by Shiny Sharpedo. <clears throat> Review time. I'm pretty sure you all know I'm going to give this a negative rating. However, there were some things I at least liked about it. For example, I liked the idea of these um, problems going on within the game having a strike system. Like, uh, you must make the right decision or else you'll... Um, I guess, completely fail, your game will fail, everything will fail. That's uh, pretty interesting. Definitely, it's definitely something that Sonic.exe doesn't do. <laughs> yeah, I brought that story up. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to get into that. And... Um, I don't really mind the idea of realistic sounds coming from the Game Boy, as people can do that. It's just very pixelated and stuff. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for positive stuff. Uh, negatives. First negative, literally mentioning other creepypastas. In the uh, first paragraph. <sighs> Unless you have a really good reason for doing it. And it connects with the story well. Don't ever do that. It takes all amount of believability out of the equation. And it's just not good. It very rarely works. And the game in general, the game just, uh, honestly, the game just felt like another EXE thing. Uh, minus the strike system, that was pretty cool, but it was just mediocre. I'm sorry. Especially with the whole ending with Patrick, um... And how he, oh, he pulls out a knife, and he tries to drag you to hell, and he chases after you, and blood spews everywhere. This feels more like a Shinolin video than a creepypasta. No offense to Shinolin, he's cool. But, like, this, uh, it's very meh. It puts off meh vibes. But the worst part of this story is the epilogue. This dude went up to his best friend 
and threw the game at him and s smashed it into pieces all because it was it bummed him out for a minute is that it this is very obviously a homebrew game and i'm pretty sure no one would do this like even if their friend intended to put that in the game because, like, how do you know anyone died in the process of making this obvious homebrew? It's ridiculous. It's just, the protagonist is a complete jerk uh, at the end of the story, and it ruins it a lot for me. So I'm going to have to dock a few points in that regard. Overall, I will give this a... <clears throat> hmm. I'll give this a four. It had some interesting ideas, but again, it was mostly overshadowed with cliches and uh, and the whole jerkish protagonist how he treats his best friend. I wouldn't want someone like that in my life. Uh, but as always, this is simply my personal opinion. We all have our opinions regarding these pastas. What did you think of the pasta? What would you have done to improve upon it? And as always, I will see you all in the next narration. I love you all. Bless.